Now you can see the Roomba's heading right towards the top of the staircase right here and check it out. The cliff sensors work great to prevent the vacuum from going off the ledge. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the iRobot Roomba J7 Plus. I did purchase this Robo Vacuum Cleaner myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this Robo Vac, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the nice retail box and packaging right here. We have the J7 Plus version, and the Plus just signifies that this one comes with the self-emptying base. You can also get this exact same vacuum cleaner, just the J7 if you want, if you don't want to get the base. But I highly recommend getting the self-emptying base. It is definitely worthwhile. Once you use it, it's hard to go back to something that doesn't have it. This is also the newer style from iRobot, which is exciting, so it's smaller and more compact. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the package contents. First up, you can see we have our safety information and warranty card, followed by an extra filter, side brush, power cord. We have our getting started document walking you through best practices and proper setup procedure, as well as how to operate and use the iRobot home app available for free on iOS and Android devices. Next, you can see we have our updated and new self-emptying base. It's a lot smaller than the previous model and version. Charging contacts, we've got a QR code right here for that front camera. I believe that's so it can line up and find everything properly. You can see right here where it's gonna suck out the contents of the dustbin, where the vacuum's gonna sit with its wheels, and there's plenty of traction and grip right there. So that's really cool. We'll come back to that in a second. And then last but not least, we have the vacuum itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. So here's the vacuum cleaner up close from the top. You can see front and center, we got the iRobot logo and branding. Really nice two-tone design. And here we got a nice metal finish. Looks like it's brushed, which looks really cool. You can see we have our one control button right here, front and center. Everything looks great. Now let's look at it from the front of the vacuum. You can see there's all of our sensors right there and we have our navigational bumper as well. Here it is from the left side. You can see an additional sensor. Here it is from the back. You can see our dustbin. And then here it is from the right side. It says iRobot Roomba J7 on it. Let's look at that dustbin. So we can just go ahead, we can press this to release and you can see the dustbin comes out. Check that out. We have a little button right there we can press to release and that's gonna open this up so we can manually empty the contents. Or you can see right here, we have our automatic dirt disposal for the bin. There's our filter, do not get this wet and we can easily replace that as needed. Now let's put that back into the vacuum. It just snaps in place and let's flip it over. So you can see on the bottom side right here, we have our side cleaning brush. We have our cliff sensors, our charging contacts, our omnidirectional wheel. We have the AeroForce cleaning system with their patented dual roller and brush design. So check that out. You can see our spring-loaded wheels that drive the vacuum around. We have additional sensors on the back side. You can see a soft little bristle brush right there. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the self-emptying base in more detail. So you can see the base from the top right here. Check it out. We have a nice iRobot stamp. Looks like a little leather handle. And then we have an additional bag in here and we already have one installed. It's as simple as just pulling this out to remove and then putting a new one in to reinstall. Now we can look at it from the side. You can see on the left side right here, we have a nice exhaust vent and we have the iRobot logo and branding. And you can see it from the front. You can get a better look at the charging contacts and Looks like a QR code for the RoboVac to navigate. Now you can see from the other side, we don't have any vent here. Now let's look at it from the back side. You can see on the back, we have a really nice cable management system for the power cord. You can see where you plug in the power cord right here, and then you can fish it through both sides to keep it flush against the wall if you want. And then lastly, here's a look at it from the bottom. Check it out. You can see our channel here where all the contents are gonna get sucked up and out. And then we have multiple feet, creating great contact with our flat surface to keep the base in place. So that's the new and updated base. And again, they do include a power cord that you can plug right in the back. That's what that looks like right here. Now let's go ahead, let's set everything up. So we got the charging base plugged in and we put the vacuum on the charging base and now we're all set and ready to go to set it up. So we have the iRobot Home app downloaded on our mobile device. This is the screen you're gonna be at once you create your account and sign in. You can see we already have multiple devices on here. 
So to add a new device, go ahead, select the top left-hand corner icon. That's gonna be your menu icon. Then choose add a robot. And now you can see it's gonna search automatically for our RoboVac and there we go. It's that simple. Now we can choose to set that up. If for some reason yours isn't showing up, you don't have a model that auto scans and finds it for you, we have options down below to add a new Roomba and then you can choose your specific make and model or BravaJet. So in this case, let's just choose setup. And now you can see we need to connect to our Wi-Fi network. So I continue, now we need to enter our Wi-Fi password. Now it's working on connecting to our robot. You can see we have this prompt where it says, press your robot's button to connect to your phone. So let's go ahead, let's press it. Should change to solid white, there we go. And you can see it's finishing connecting to our Wi-Fi. So there we go, it took around 30 seconds for everything to fully set up and connect. Now let's select continue. We can name our Roomba. So let's go ahead, let's name it Roomba J7. Select continue. I can already hear my Alexa device in the background automatically connecting to it already since we've already authorized our iRobot home account, which is cool. So keep that in mind if you have multiple Roombas, it's really easy to set it up. You don't have to do anything else if you've linked it to an Alexa. So here we go. So now we can learn more about the RoboVac. This vacuum cleans in systematic rows, which is really great because it actually knows where it's cleaning and it's not sporadically missing areas and just go in, you know, in a bump and respond cleaning pattern. So that's important to give you that nice high quality clean. So it's pretty cool. It's walking through a lot of great features here. So the camera is smart enough to locate and avoid potential obstacles like dog poop, cords, cables, things on the floor. Create smart maps too. Smart enough to avoid and detect your steps. Really cool, check that out. So I really like this graph, really neat. And there we go. Now we're ready, we can opt in to obstacle image review. So let's go ahead, let's opt in right here. And there we go, you can see that's it. We're taken to our device settings right now. You can see it's currently charging. So let's really briefly now go over some of the J7 features within the iRobot app. So first up, you can see we have an image of the RoboVac. We have our charging icon. We have a map icon as well. We'll view that later once we have a map populated of our cleaning area. We can command it to empty the bin right now. We have our favorite section right here, so we could add a favorite depending on what we want to do. We have a schedule, so we can schedule this. So we can set a couple different options here by time and which days of the week we want it to repeat. Maybe you have like a leave for work routine and you want it to run or maybe you go to bed. We also have an automation option too. So it's smart enough to detect when you leave the home and it will start cleaning and you can have that schedule. So two different options there, really neat. And then just select the schedule button and you're all set and ready to go. We have our cleaning history. So once we have some jobs finished, we can see the history. So you can learn more about area and lifetime. And we can go back. Then we have messages, we have any updates, notifications, that sort of thing, they can be found right here. And now we can look at our robot settings. So we can learn more about the J7. We can locate the J7, let's do that right now. So it's letting us know that it's on the charging base. If we remove it, it will chime. I'm not sure there's enough battery, let's see. Let's try to remove it. So there we go, it's chiming for us. I'll just push this button. All right, so not chiming anymore. We have our cleaning preferences. So we can choose our cleaning passes, daily, extra clean, or room size clean, depending on what you're after. We have our bin full behavior. So we can choose what we want to have happen with our Roomba once the bin is full. So do not clean when full or keep cleaning when full. And then we have our obstacle detection. So I would recommend leaving that on, but we can also turn it off if you don't want to. And then we have our Wi-Fi settings, our robot language. So we have multiple languages, check that out. We can turn metric units on or off, we can reboot it, and we can also remove and factory reset our Roomba J7. Then we have a help section and an iRobot beta section as well. So you can see if there's any new beta features in the future, you can join the beta if you want. 
Now let's go ahead, let's let it charge up and let's start cleaning. So first up, you can see our Roomba is going to clean everywhere here. So check it out as it gets its position. Locating itself on the map that it's built. And then you can see it's starting to clean now. And it's gonna work on cleaning back and forth in a logical cleaning pattern. So it's gonna exit the frame. It's gonna run into a kitchen table chair and now you can see it's gonna make its way back in and continue on on its path. Now it's gonna make its way to the kitchen cabinets right there. It's gonna make contact. You can see it's gonna turn around and resume its cleaning path. So that's a quick look at the logical cleaning pattern and how it's gonna go back and forth and guarantee a nice clean and great coverage of your house and floor. Now you can see what it's like for the Roomba to clean on different environments and surfaces right here. So check it out as it's navigating between the runner and the hard floor. No issues at all with its movement. It can freely clean both environments or combination of the two, half on or half off the rug. It's free to move about as it sees fit. And we have those shoes on the floor over there. It is aware of them and it definitely stays away. Always best practice not to have shoelaces lying around or anything like that. But you can see it was kind of driving half on, half off the runner with no issues. And now it's completely made its way off and it's picking up power a little bit as it's now cleaning on the hard surface. Now you can see the Roomba's heading right towards the top of the staircase right here and check it out. The cliff sensors work great to prevent the vacuum from going off the ledge. Most RoboVacs do a good job on hard floors and surfaces cleaning, but where I feel like Roomba vacuums excel is cleaning carpets. So check it out right here. You can see we have our Roomba cleaning the carpets right here and the nice line that it leaves as it goes back and forth. No issues at all as it moves freely back and forth. And it's great to go under obstacles like you see here. We have the crib it can go under as well as a dresser in this room. So it's small enough that it's able to do that. You can see it's gonna go back and forth in that logical cleaning pattern, leaving nice lines for us. Let's watch it again here. You can see it's aware of the crib. Now it's gonna sense the leg. And it's going to continue to turn and clean, giving us that nice, consistent clean with full coverage. Now you can see it's back out from the crib and it's continuing on in its logical cleaning pattern. Check out those lines right there. They look really nice. We'll watch it complete the turn. So it's going to bump into the wall. It's going to make its way back around. And you can see leaving a great cleaning pattern, just like if you're using a handheld vacuum cleaner. Now you can see we're conducting our poop test right here. Check out all the different pieces of poop we have on the ground here. Different sizes and shapes to see how well the Roomba responds. So far, it's definitely sensing everything. And it's not hitting any of the poop. In fact, it's not even going near any of the poop. So now we just finished our first clean with our Roomba. Let's go ahead, let's check out the contents of the dustbin. I purposefully didn't have it empty into the self-emptying base. You may notice this red light on here. I took the bag out, so it's not going to empty. So we could see what it was able to vacuum up here. These are real world results from my house. Yes, I'm that disgusting. You can see all the pet hair, tons of food crumbs. There's a piece of shredded cheese, grass clippings, leaves, tons of dirt, really fine particles of dirt and dust in there, which is impressive. Maybe you can see it on this side too, everything that we have in there. So it did a good job on its first pass, no complaints. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the bottom side of the unit. So you can see right here what's really nice, no tangles, no human hair, pet hair, anything stuck on the roller brushes. So this is a fantastic cleaning system. If you're coming from maybe another RoboVac that gets a lot of tangles, 
This is gonna be one of the best systems on the market today to keep you tangle free. Now that we got our first clean out of the way, let's go ahead, let's open up our Roomba J7 using the iRobot home app again to see some of the additional data that is now populated. So first up, you may notice we have our map icon here. We can select that and now you can see we have our main floor map. At this stage, we can select the plus button if we want to take our Roomba upstairs or downstairs. We can create multiple maps. Let's open up the main floor map. I wanna point out too, it took about three or four mapping sessions to get the map populated to this point. It will continue to improve over time. But you can see our map right here, the main floor with our no-go zones, kitchen, living room, and family room, everything's labeled with dividers. So we could add and remove our dividers right here. We can also change our room labels. And then lastly, we can add a no-go zone or a clean zone. So it's a very simple map, but it works great. And then next you can see now we have a cleaning history. We can view our lifetime statistics, so our area clean. And you can see number of jobs, total time, dirt events. Let's look at our most recent event right here. Check it out. First up, we have a notification, unable to empty the bin, the bag's missing. I did that on purpose so we could empty it here. Check that out too. We have a review of our clean. So we have some data there. You can see that little white box. We can contribute to a database, mark as a temporary obstacle or no obstacle, or I'm not sure. And we can review all those photos as you see them right here. Pretty cool. And then further down, we get our specific cleaning statistics. So very detailed, really smart and cool that we have all of that data right at our fingertips. And lastly, you can see we have a message populated now so we can extend the warranty of our RoboVac if we desire. Now let's go ahead, let's empty the RoboVac with the self-emptying base. So now we have the Roomba on the self-emptying base and on the mobile app you can see we have the prompt to go ahead and empty the bin, so let's do that now. So there we go, not bad at all. Very powerful, pretty loud, but it's short. It's a short spurt as it empties everything. Now let's look at the base and let's see what actually came out if everything was emptied. Wow, so it definitely sucked up all the pet hair, everything else you'd be worried about. I do notice a little bit of crumbs still in there, kind of some loose dirt crumbs at the bottom, some heavier rocks and pieces of dirt but it did a really nice job. I'm impressed. So that was really cool. I mean, super simple. It's so much easier and nicer than you having to empty it every time. So it's definitely one of those features that's a luxury, but once you use a RoboVac with the self-emptying base, I guarantee you won't go back to one without. The Roomba J7 works with popular voice assistants like Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. Within the iRobot Home app, you actually have a list of all the commands. So check it out here, you can see tons of different actions. Start vacuuming, stop vacuuming, pause, resume, return to home base, check the status, locate your Roomba, stop the location, schedule vacuuming, remove a schedule, list a schedule. And then you can see for certain models like the J7, we can schedule by room, clean by room, clean by zone, clean by object, and clean by favorite. So we have a lot of different actions there. And then they have a lot of fun commands for it. For example, you can see to start the vacuum, you could say, unleash the hounds, which cracks me up. And then you could ask it if you want it to pause, you could tell it to play dead or to resume to work its magic. So a lot of voice commands. If you're deep into a Google Assistant or Alexa ecosystem, you'll enjoy having that ability to use your voice to control your RoboVac and everything's clear right within the app what it's able to do with specific commands. And since you chose the J7, you have access to all the commands. So really nice that you have even additional features versus some of the other models. So let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Roomba J7. This is a fantastic vacuum cleaner. It's definitely luxurious and you're paying a premium for it, but I'd argue that it does come with some essential features that regardless of the vacuum cleaner you end up with, you should make sure you get. And that feature is smart mapping. You want to get a RoboVac that has the smart mapping feature. 
even if it costs a little bit more, you'll have a much more enjoyable experience. You'll get a better clean because it actually knows where it is and it cleans in a logical cleaning pattern. You get the ability to do room by room cleans. And most importantly, you can set no-go zones virtually and you can set cleaning zones. This has that feature and it works Great, this also comes with a self-emptying base. You can get the variation without the plus, just the J7 if you want. But once you use a self-emptying base, you will be hard pressed to go back to a vacuum cleaner without a self-emptying base. So I'd highly recommend getting a self-emptying base. Having the upgraded camera on the front is a great addition to this. So if you're concerned about maybe the horror stories you've read online about Roombas or Robovacs running over pet waste, you now have a guarantee and a reassurance that if that happens, they will replace it or maybe you've actually had that happen, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out this vacuum cleaner. Now, in regards to like the i6 or the i7, that camera is really more of a luxury than a necessity, so I'd make sure at a minimum, those are the vacuum cleaners that you're checking out. The biggest drawback to this vacuum cleaner, I would say, is the price. I just think it's a little bit expensive compared to the performance you get out of the i7 and the i6, which in my opinion is nearly identical to this vacuum cleaner, and they cost a little bit less. But if you wanna pay extra for that camera because you have a lot of pets, a lot of pets that poop around your house, or a lot of cords, tangles, and you just don't want to mess with prepping your environment as much, then it's a worthwhile upgrade to get the J7. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.